Oh, um, yeah. This is the Generative Commons call on Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. You're about to say something, Hank. Uh, will we also be in the Mattermost? Yes. Yeah. I just I just posted on the Mattermost channel for this that we're having the call, but I realized I didn't really broadcast it much at all. So I don't know who who realizes. And we're still we're still kind of in, in limbo about um, we're, we're we're in a kind of a limbo about calendaring because when I early on when I tried to set up calendars and invite the Google group of membership to the calendaring, it wound up being duplicated or other weird things. Oh. And then uh, Phil has put us, made sure that we're in the Trove calendar, but not enough people know to go use it. And we haven't embedded that in our website. It's a couple of little goofy things about letting people know like where we are when, so. Oh yeah, that's too bad. But I mean, we'll, we'll get it sorted out. I mean, it's, it's not a matter that can be, the conversation won't be concluded in a couple of weeks. Exactly, exactly. Have, have we ever sent the, the draft letter we, we worked on to invite other people into the conversation? Uh, which letter? I don't remember which draft. Yeah, I, think... that's, I thought it was for this conversation. Let's see. Um, into the generative commons specifically, you mean? I, yeah, we, we were talking a couple of weeks ago about inviting a number of other people with oh, uh, also we, from outside OGM with very different uh, yes. uh, perspectives. Um, thank you. We had a goal to invite a bunch of people who, who ought to be in this conversation or who indicated interest in this conversation yeah. into it. And we've not done that, but I don't remember that we started drafting the invite letter. Which we I thought we did. I'm, I'm all so disorganized. I'm, I'm doing... 10 things at once, but I, I sort of remember that we did something in Google Docs. Let's see if I can find a reference to it in my yeah. own. Oops. Let's see if I can find a tab open with a with such an such a letter, because I would have I would have left it in my way too many tabs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me sitting open it. on my desktop. <laughs> I think that's what modern life is all about. It's like tab yeah. tab management. How do you how do you keep from being overwhelmed by the tab deluge? Have you ever <laughs> used one tab? I did, and then what happens is they just vanish, and then I don't know that they're there, and then like, hey, they're gone. Good. <laughs> life is life is easy, and and there are actually things I want to turn my attention to. So, if they don't stay in view, it's a little bit like urgent emails. Like once they scroll off, and I use, I would die without Gmail's priority email. Mm -hmm. Like like I real I use that. I love it. I don't like the three tab view. That doesn't help me. But the but the priority email can't live without it. Um, and yet when things scroll down off, you know, off the main screen, I don't have, I wish I could program Gmail to three times a week, show me only urgent emails. Because yeah. I have a label that's orange, marked urgent, and right. anything that anything I need to reply to is that. But it's in, but everything else is kind of intertwingled with that and it just Yeah. Yeah. So I don't you know, think the, the one thing I'd say about about one tab that I don't know if you if you tried is that you can, um, it, it's a little kludgy, but you can um, head different sections, pin them and drag um, stuff that was in, in, you know, drag a particular thing that was a tab into, like you can create an urgent heading in, um, in one tab, pin it to the top of your, screen and, and drag things into it and it stays there and drag things into it that that's really that's interesting yeah yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure i mean i know you can at least drag things around within a heading i, I have to go back and check i use it not religiously but it's, yeah. it's sort of like when you know, i'm in a situation where my um you know i have the one tab extension ex, ex, um, installed so that I'm, I'm in a situation where I've got too many tabs open and everything's slowing down and I want to shut down and all that. I one tab it so I know I'm going to be able to. And I, I count on the browser coming back and refreshing all the tabs it had open, which has been pretty reliable so far. But I'm realizing that I should use one tab more strategically because a bunch of, so I'm just, I'm just assessing my tabs for a second. Uh, part of my problem is that I can't stand Apple's mail client. And so I'm in Gmail, which means I'm in a tab. One, one of the tabs in Chrome is like super important and is my Gmail 
from which all good and all evil spring simultaneously. Uh, so that's that's kind of weird, right? And and I also use GCal, so there's another tab, which is my calendar. And I moved from Evernote to Keep, Google Keep, believe it or not. So another tab is my Google Keep notes. Damn. I know. I'm you, are, like, you are deep in the G I'm deep, <laughs> I'm deep in the G complex. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I'm using, oh, and, and Google recently messed around with uh, Google Hangouts and chat and a bunch of other things. So I now have a new tab of Google Fi because... I have just just to show what a what an acolyte I am. I have a Pixel 4a, and I'm and I'm on Google Fi, meaning the hybrid uh, Wi-Fi. So my my monthly bill is thirty bucks. My monthly bill for cellular is thirty bucks, which I love. Um, in in money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the bill to your soul is huge. <laughs> that's right. That's right. The, the, show me the receipts. Um, but and if and if Facebook were offering any of these things, I wouldn't touch them. Like I, I try, right. I, I still trust Google. You know, two orders of magnitude more than I trust Facebook, for example. And I'm counting on Google's not yet being fully evil. But by the way, the other cellular carriers are likely all worse. Like likely every 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 blessed one of them, Verizon, AT and T, Sprint, uh, T-Mobile, whoever, uh, their practices have historically always been really really crappy to sell off your data and do whatever. So yeah. So I'm I'm like I'm at least with the more or less ethically intentioned vendor of services I can't avoid. The, the, you know, the fifth to least of all evils. Exactly, exactly. Which is better than the fourth. Well, I'm, I, it's a reverse. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, so I've got like four tabs that are just got to stay there and I always have them flush left. Then I have a bunch of things that are <clears throat> important in quotes significant things I either need to watch and put in my brain and curate, read and filter and reply to, annotate or something like that. And, and like, there's probably six or eight of those open right now. Uh, and some of them are, are YouTube videos of somebody's TEDx talk or somebody's interesting talk that explains something I wanna know, eh, not essential to like my daily life. But I mean, things... Factor could be useful for this, by the way. And <laughs> we should, do, we should do a walkthrough sometime just to like, you know, I, I would I actually, um, I, on my list of things to do is to have a, a call with you and Phil and Pete and whoever else you think is uh, is on that about Factor and, and, and OGM and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, and so and so those could easily, I think one tab could be a very nice home for the, yeah. the ones I just mentioned because it's just like, come come look at these later, but I've got to know to go look at them. Yeah. And, then, and then there's a bunch of tabs that are open tasks which are a presentation I need to update, a couple of uh, Google Docs that need, need you know, attention, a Google Forms survey for results, which nobody's answering, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And, and they're being visible, and I curate like what's there pretty often because I'm overwhelmed by them. They're being visible is important. And then what happens is, uh, like yesterday, there were, uh, yesterday and Monday, there were a couple of really lovely calls where lots of interesting information showed up. And, Anytime somebody puts something in the mattermost of the chat, I open it. I open a tab, and then I my intention is to go back and curate that into my brain, right. and it, like annotate and, and sort of process, process it. You know, post process it, and uh, that means that there's an hour gone after every call like that, just to just to get those things out. I'm just curious. Sorry, Hank. I don't. I hope this is interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. This one tab interests me as well. <laughs> absolutely. Um, <laughs> is there a way in the brain not not to to you know make more investment here, but but in the brain is there a you know essentially an inbox? Yes, there's know, something a place that you can put things that are so they're in the brain, but they're not. not so placed funny, yet. funny thing you should mention that there's a thing called brain box, which is uh, da -da 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 -da. A diff that's yeah. a different. So software, right? Or is uh, that part of no, it? No, it's it's baked in. Uh, let me just okay. share my share my screen real quick. So here's my brain. Here's one tab because I went to look at it the moment you mentioned it. Uh, and then this little box looking thing up next to my avatar is brain box. And you can email yourself links. And there, you know, wow. this right here, I have not opened this in months. So the problem with brain box is that it becomes this little pit of stale information that yeah. I that I haven't curated properly into the brain, Trump falls into trap he set for Biden. Seriously, September, 2020. <laughs> um, 
And so it's a great feature that I'm misusing or haven't grooved or mm -hmm. uh, am ignoring or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, it, part of it is out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And keeping things at the periphery of your radar in some efficient way. Yeah. And, and nobody's really created the efficient desktop integrated, you know, PIM yeah. app that lets you do that. Uh, yeah. And, and therefore every now and then we're all of us like rebooting our machines because all memory has been eaten up and our machines are like, Oh, I'm in yeah, yeah. slow motion. So, um, so there we are. I guess, I guess that this is, this is probably what you guys talk about in Free Jerry's Brain. I've never been to one of those. A piece of that, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I've been thinking more and more because I've been talking about it more and more. What does the, the multi-person conversation look like, right? If you're using Factor and I'm using the Brain and Hank is in uh, uh, Kumu, and someone else shows up using a different tool, and we'd like to have a fruitful conversation with what we've done and know, how, what does that look like? And I'm super interested in that question. Well, right? that, I mean, that sort of circles back to what I was talking about yesterday, just in terms of fostering the, you know, be, being, being the ones, well, I don't want to get in too much into OGM because it's more about definition of the commons, but um, that to be participating, to be a, a, a platform and an individual, you know, participating in, in collective intelligence in the commons is to be using a platform that is geared to interoperability. And that's, that's the, Thing that nobody nobody wants to no existing commercial platform um, you know wants to lower the switching costs to you know switch 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 you know at, as you're working because it's all just the lens on the same information that is your stuff so you can share your stuff in it's like a it's like, like Google Translate <laughs> um, uh, where you know. I could look at your information. I could look at the brain in factor and you could look at factor, you know, my factor right. in the brain. Right, exactly. You know, or whatever. Yeah, um, and you're totally right. And the vendors are not really motivated to, to let this happen. Uh, how, do we, how do we motivate them? But also the distributed web, the D-web is, has the possibility of leading toward so like the outside in solution here where individuals actually get data sovereignty, but right. then they're, but then they're also liberally and generously, many of them, not all of them sharing what they have and wh what they've connected. And therefore it's just information that's available to whatever tools show up. Um, and maybe that works. Maybe that, yeah. maybe, maybe there's no way to dissolve the silos, but rather you can build little icebergs that come in from all over the place and come in. Hey Judy. Yeah. Good morning. Hey, Judy. Good morning. We're a little distracted. We're talking about other sorts of things like information management and how, how, what, what does sense making look like? You know, ten years from now, uh, which is of course a lovely, a lovely question. And, 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 we were drifting toward the commons, though. And we were totally. I was, I was kind of about to say that that we were, we were heading right back in toward the commons and, and talking about okay, so what does that mean for how we agree to work? And yesterday's build OGM call was really generative for this call. Uh, and Michael, what you were saying in yesterday's call was, was great. Uh, it really, um, it, you shown a nice light on, on stuff we need to sort out and, and sort out well so that it works. And, and partly to paraphrase, uh, so everyone's on more or less on the same page. Um, and I'm gonna only catch a piece of this. So please complete this if, if uh, what, what I missed. So as OGM becomes an organization, uh, like its structure and its intentions and its goals really matter in terms of the tr its trustworthiness and the motivation of other entities to uh, collaborate and participate in the generative commons. And so uh, a piece of what we need to sort out is uh, what are the kinds of entities? What are their sort of declarations for how they work? Hence this call uh, and this sequence of thinking. Um, and, 
And what are the what are the most trustworthy ways we can set those things up? Go ahead, Judy. A couple of questions, and I apologize for coming in a few minutes late. Um, when we when we talk about the generative commons, do are we focusing primarily on sort of its structure or its processes and how the two relate? Because I think a lot of if we want it to be generative, the processes become really important. Yeah. And and a thought that I had that's a super simple way to look at things when you're starting new organizational behavior is what I used to call start, stop, keep doing. <clears throat> so what is it that we'd like it to start doing or the group to do that we haven't been doing before? What are the undesirable behaviors <laughs> that we should try to eliminate? And what do we want to keep doing, which is building on what we already have. And that would be something we could put up almost as a, an ongoing query to this channel or other channels in terms of attributes of this channel. Thoughts add, add to the columns of start, stop, keep doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the keep like doing that. would build the cultural definition. Right. It would, it would allow people to affirm the things that they like that is causing them to come. That's like the seed weed feed of group process, right? Because mm -hmm. seed weed feed is sort of like portfolio management or project management or whatever. Mm -hmm. What uh, you seed a bunch of stuff, you weed the bad ones and you feed the good ones and keep going. So sim similar to that. It's very, uh, very similar. Yeah. It, 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 the, little, the, the subtle difference would, would be the, the behaviors versus the content, I think. The seed weed feed has more to do with the concept than the behavior in my head, but maybe I'm wrong about that. It's, I think they're very, very similar. So I mm -hmm. think however we would choose to do it, I'm just looking at something that doesn't require many Congresses like this to try to figure out what the group wants, but something that's more direct. Yes, um, thank you. And, and so maybe that means we should start enumerating our processes or our, our, the, the different elements of what we're talking about and then uh, do what you just said, basically stop, uh, start, stop, and keep doing. And and you could you could do it maybe something. You could have a category that's like values slash behaviors. Right. Because your behaviors express your values, but you could separate them too. <laughs> I don't know if we have any values we want to stop having, but if someone perceives we do, we probably want to know that. But we could take some headers and then have the seed weed feed under each header. Yeah. Um, and create new headers as they emerge from the seed weed feed. <laughs> well, there's some values and assumptions that come out of the capitalism that we're all immersed in that we're trying to counteract. So one of those values is you must suck the value out of everything you touch and it must be yours, uh, right? As opposed to let's generate common value and then let's everybody make a profit on top of that value in different ways. And that, that's an intentional shift. And so your question about process or structure is really important because there's so much of this that's process or even behind that intention. And if I could hack anything, I'd be like, hey, if you agree with this intention, everything else in the generative commons agreement rolls out of this intention. And maybe the intention is something as primitive as we are all working here to, to create a generative commons together. Uh, and that may be fuzzy because you've never heard the phrase, here's what that means. But just you know, unpacking that should lead to the precepts that we're talking about, and should be relatively simple to do. Um, I don't know about simple to do. Maybe that was that was probably just wishful thinking. <laughs> worth doing. Uh, yeah. If, if it's <laughs> worth doing, it's something always can, simple. <laughs> and and yeah. something we can learn to do, I think, is the important thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But 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 in terms of process, like design from trust is the thing I'm, I want to stand up as a as a consultancy and. Uh, the comparison I make is that you can bolt design thinking onto most any organization on earth and they will productively start inventing new products and services. It's like I can show you, I, I've been through the training. I know how that kind of works. No big deal. But, but I can't tell you that what they invent is going to be morally okay. Like it, it's a really good generative process. You can't bolt design from trust onto an organization because it's about trust. And, and part of it is holding a mirror up to your own organization uh, to become more trustworthy, to understand where it's reaching trust and what it's doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, the practice is not something you just bolt on. The practice involves being a part of a community of practice that is holding up those mirrors and doing progress, you know, 
and, and, and whatever else. And, and, and that becomes process and intention really quickly. And how do you, how do you prove an intention was carried out properly, right? Hey, we meant to be trustworthy, but then we sold off your data to some third party, which betrayed our we contract to be evil. And we're, we, we tried really hard to not be evil. We're back to that conversation, darn it. <laughs> um, but but there's, a, there's a whole bunch here of sort of kind of about intentions um, that are hard to enforce and hard to monitor, but really easy, but, but, but easy to invoke if everybody's like running in the same general direction. And sorry, Michael, you wanted to jump in a little while ago, but. Um, oh, I was just gonna ask Judy, when, when you were, um, when you were defining the, the stop, start. Um, keep doing. Keep doing. What was, keep start, doing, stop, yeah. keep doing. Yeah, keep doing. Um, I was thinking about it in terms of, um, you know, we were talking a little bit about, about OGM's role as, um, you know, it's, it's uh, sorry, it's a little um, grandiose of OGM to think of itself as, you know, keepers of the commons, but, like to be um, to be ambassadors um, and and a kind of uh, <laughs> let's say pro immigration entity for people to come from the uncommons to the commons. Um, you know, we're, we're the we're the the commons. Uh, you know, travel commission, you know, the- The, the tourist bureau. Um, so, so- I don't think you were quite done. You're, you're breaking up on us a little bit, Michael. What's that? You're breaking up on us a little bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna stop video for a little bit and see yep. if that's better. Thanks, Michael. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Um, so, you know, if we're trying to more than the tourist bureau, you know, get people to come and settle and and observe the customs and mores of the, the commons, um, then thinking about what it means in terms of what you start doing, stop doing, and keep doing, um, is is part of the the brochure um, that you know that we're actively trying to to hand out to people so are we like um, park, park rangers kind of <laughs> you know i mean well, but i mean i think there's and and, and it, as a as a granting body or as a as a you know you know wanting to have used the power of of capital toward this um we're you know giving fellowships, stipends, grants, you know, I don't know, you know, what, what is within our purview to do, but we're, we're making it possible. We're telling people how, and in certain cases, we're making it possible for people who otherwise couldn't do it to do it. That's totally right. Yeah. Yeah. That's our intention anyway. Exactly that. <clears throat> um, it's kind of like also, I think it marries somewhat, I'm, I'm thinking that we need to have a simple registration process that that sort of gives us a little bit more than just hi this is my first time on the video um, and maybe people come before they actually register but if we're going to have entities that belong to the commons and adhere to its values then some sort of extremely simple you know name email address phone number if you're willing the normal sorts of things but then you know kind of like Trove doesn't exactly spell out skills, but it kind of does. You know, what are you contributing to the commons? Yeah. What could you do with us? Um, do you want to do that in certain vectors? You know, maybe I'm good at meetings, but I'd rather run them in arts or in science or in whatever, so that we start to, and this could be for either individuals or entities. Right. And so, and, and kind of, and what would I like to learn or gain from the commons? And, and I, I say gain guardedly because I don't mean capitalistically, but, but what, 
what am I seeking in the comments? Right. Kind of so, thing. So that's really interesting. It takes me a bunch of a bunch of different places. Because this started as the generative commons agreement, which was meant at an organizational level, and we were kind of heading toward designing that and figuring out what that means. Um, what you're saying sounds maybe like a generative commons pledge, or pledge sounds a little strong, but it, but it's like it's like hey, here's it's a little bit like a codes of conduct for exactly. online spaces, sort of right? Like knowing what the ethics are of the corporation you join. Right. So it could. So it could be that when you join OGM, we ask you to go stare at a page that says, here's our code of conduct. So, you know, by, by being in here, you're kind of agreeing to this. And here's, our, here's the generative commons wishful thinking list um, or, or intention or something. Intention is not a terrible word here. No, it isn't. Um, and maybe that is a, a simple spelled out thing that says, hey, when we're here, this is how we work it. Uh, you know, click here to go read the organizational flavored version of it, which is the agreement that that you know or we want organizations to to connect to. Um, but this is this is the intention with which we're working here. And then, uh, Michael, you were saying that it seems sort of grandiose for uh, OGM to be keepers of the commons, which I agree with. But but um, I had forgotten who has you know in basically integrity and interpersonal communications. It's like each person is fully responsible for the communication. So if so, if you think I said something different, it's up to me to figure out how to communicate what I really meant to say, and I have a lot of responsibility for that. So so in that sense, anybody who wants to be a steward of the commons has an equal and shared and mutual interdependent responsibility for being keepers of the commons, and having in your head that you are kind of keepers of the commons with a big K and a big C is not a terrible thing because it says this is important, but we are all keepers of the commons in the sense that there's no one sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, we, we are all uh, mutually taking care of this thing because it needs all of our help. And I think, I, I think that's a, an well, interesting I, thing to, to think and about. And we have a couple of tools too, besides the start, stop, keep doing. Um, we've been using regularly in the Kiko lab calls at Ken's suggestion I like, I wish, I wonder, and we recently added, I learned. And so those are different ways of the, they don't have the stop, but the, the, the attributional dependence of, of the experience are there. And we could take some of those things that we have already started using in some places and think about how to use as is or slightly repurpose but again, all of it's around developing shared values and a sense of personal responsibility to both practice those values, share those values, and guard those values in the operation of the entity. Yep. And that's sort of something that I wish society did more of in general. Yeah, I think, <laughs> and, and as a small tangent, but really relevant here, when Ken brings in wisdom like I wish I like I wish I wonder, Ken's been a facilitator forever. He has a large bag of tricks, uh, some of which are taken from or have found their way into liberating structures or pyragogy or other bodies of work. Right. And one of the things that I wish we did was make those bodies of work easier to use, more accessible, more available to us and to everybody. And wouldn't it be cool if when Ken says, hey, wouldn't it be great if we used I like, I wish, I wonder if there was kind of a link to it and there was a page that everyone could be like, oh, here's a nice description of the process. Here's an example of it. And I'm now going to be a Johnny Appleseed and propagate that into my other meetings because it was so functional here. Lather, rinse, repeat with a whole series of, you know, Liberating Structures has one thing called one, two, four, all which I've used in much, a bunch of different places because it's lovely. And it says, when you're, when you're asking a big group an important question, first give them time for introspection, then pair them up, then put them in quads, and then come back to plenary. And that process lets them, lets them get the words out, lets them think together, lets them get to know people, and then makes the plenary discussion much richer than it would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. Terrific process that should be easily at hand. And once you invoke it, it's not like there should be a button called one, two, four, all that invokes, a, you know, none of that's really well, needed. I don't know, we could have buttons and t-shirts. <laughs> but, but, but also there could be a button in Zoom, a programmable button that says, hey, let's run one, two, four, all now that automates the process of giving, of setting up timers, giving everybody a minute to themselves, pairing, pairing everybody up randomly, doing the quads. I mean, that, 
that is a lot of manual labor for whoever's running the Zoom. Uh, and we're friends with Ross Mayfield who joined Zoom and is, is doing the Zoom applets, I think they're called, Zaplets they're called. And he, there was an announcement about Zaplets just five months ago during lockdown, I think. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So there's a programming interface for Zoom and they're looking for third parties to create uh, Zaplets that'll plug in. They're, so liberating structures could easily be a Zaplet where there's a collection of group process techniques that are then implemented in Zoom in a handy way. That's a really interesting, that, that to me is a really interesting application of oh, what and we're I also trying like, to do. I also like the notion that's implicit in that, that they're intrinsically exportable. So if you use it once and you like it, there's some place you can find it to use in the next group you're meeting with in three hours. Exactly. And then just to recommend it and teach it forward and all of that. Um, so, so OGM is not really, we're not using OGM -E tools in our conversations very much, but Kiko Lab does a bunch uh, now and then. So does Metacogs because. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Metacogs does too. Even Piragachi does sometimes. Yeah, uh, so, and, and Piragaji does in hand-drawn uh, hand drawn designs a lot because I watched some of their older calls before we did the podcast interview. And it was like, hey, here, here, here's a diagram of how this looks to me. It's like, oh, that's cool. Um, so we're not, uh, and I hate the term dog fooding, but, but we're, we're not eating our own dog food. We're not, we're not actually using the tools that we're talking about either on the process side often or on the visualization, analysis, storytelling side. That also means then that within either the massive wiki or someplace, we need to have a list of the frequently used tools and the tutorials for those same tools. And, and this it's, brings that's us- coming, that's, a, that's a part of the learning of what you're doing. Exactly. Um, you're learning to share in ways that are more effective. And that's another whole flotilla project in and of itself. Which brings us back to a piece of yesterday's Build OGM conversation, which was about GitHub and its role in minding the commons or sharing resources. And uh, one of the things that's on my, one of the too many things on my wish list is uh, taking the OGM wiki and building out parts of it to include and enhance uh, things like liberating structures. Um, and not by stealing them, but rather by, you know, forking them with a, a soft forking them. And Pete made the distinction yesterday between, uh, he calls it big F forking and little F forking, where- <laughs> I keep worrying about the third letter changing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about that. Um, uh, so the, um, and a soft fork is, is good. A soft fork is how GitHub actually works because anytime I want to suggest a, a productive change, Judy, to your repo of, of one of your projects, I fork it, I make the change and I submit a pull request. That is the process that makes GitHub work. A hard fork is I'm tired of trying to collaborate with you, Judy, on your repo. I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to copy your stuff and then go try to build my own following my own crowd. And so I think what OGM wants to do is like soft forking everywhere uh, to be a really good player in all these different communities, but then to add value by instrumenting those different bodies of work so that they're really usable in the commons in a variety of settings, not just as a zaplet for Zoom, which I assume to be a proprietary format that wouldn't work in anybody else's video conferencing, but rather as a group process that could be available. There's a thing called WebRTC, and there's a bunch of Zoom competitors that have gotten very little attention over, over pandemic, unfortunately, but they all use WebRTC. And, and it's a, WebRTC is this pretty sophisticated protocol that lets you do multi-party video conferencing in a browser for cheap. And like shabing shaboom, you can build a beautiful app uh, with this protocol. So what if, as, if, if we were to build Zaplets because they might be really useful and interesting and make liberating structures much more available. Could we architect them in a way that's actually more useful to WebRTC competitors and happens to work in Zoom, for example? Then we would be feeding the commons uh, in a really productive way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so sorry, that was complicated. That was like three things together at once, but, but intentionally, that's kind of where I'd love to, to you know, uh, and train our energies. And, and part of this is like, we've attracted a bunch of people who have, um, I think we have the shared goal of this collective intelligence thing or, or just the shared goal of fixing problems in the world like 
the the food system or or whatever like like, like that's what we have some of us um like michael have a startup and have a platform and have like code and, and are figuring out a business model some of us have a thesis like doug carmichael and garden world politics or and 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 some of the tabs open in my browser are some of like ogm members submissions to hey consider this this is this is my thinking for 10 years like how what do you think and and for me what do you for me what, I'm, what I'd love to figure out to do in the spirit of the generative commons is how to ask some of these folks to pair up and compare notes and see how some of their work might either connect or, or in fact merge, um, I don't know, or enrich one another. And I, and I think this is not doable in a crowd, like the moment you no, get more I, than- I wonder if that might be an invitation to peer gaji to think about how to do that because yeah. it really is an example of <clears throat> peer learning and sharing. And they may have some insights given the depth at which they've explored all of their approaches to, to pursue that. Sorry, I just have to yeah. get rid of it. Um, there probably are other groups too. So maybe you just put out an open question and see who responds, but it's- I really like that. Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't thought about, there's very likely a group process technique described for something like this or, or several that would be really the useful other, in this the process. The other person besides Ken, I mean, the people I've identified as some of my resources include Nancy White and um, Piragaji and so forth. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm getting to know Open Global Commons and other places, so. And you've probably bumped into through Kiko Lab, Tom Attlee and the mm -hmm. Wise Democracy Pattern Language, which yep, is another another beautiful body of work, right? So hey, Vincent. I mean, and those are things that, that again, if we're going to put together an online informal college of opportunities for learning and sharing tools and techniques and wisdom, then there's, maybe it is a library, maybe it is a referral list. I don't know what we want to call it. Um, maybe it's a knowledge vector, right. <laughs> knowledge right. and experience vector or something like that. But it's sort of, trying to look at all of what we have and how do you cross sort it most effectively to get to the wisdom the individual or group needs. And this, 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 what you just said, Judy, feels to me like the description of a, of the thing formerly known as a guild in OGM. And the first build OGM call was, I was trying to say, how, what should a guild do? How do we structure it? And we wound up saying guild is a bad word. And I don't know what a good replacement for it is, but- well, like a contest. <laughs> Let's yeah. a contest to name um, knowledge content zones. <laughs> that, that could be it, exactly. Because that's um, really, I think what we're, we're talking about is individuals or groups who affiliate in a particular knowledge content behavior way. Bingo. And, and so I don't know if those are the right three words. I, I like three words because it's simple, but it's, knowledge it's all, content behavior. Yeah, it's, is, it's also about a particular craft or skill. Um, I love the word craft. Uh, I'm, I'm all, all over craft. And I think that like knowledge work is a craft. And, and in fact, it's multiple crafts that are sort of complementary. And, and maybe we are a craft studio for knowledge work. Yeah. And, pe and, and, and peacemaking. That, hold on, let's write that down. <laughs> you know, another uh, thing I was- sorry, I'm, on, I'm on kind of a weird mood this morning, so. That, that's all you're like- Dial wisdom, me down wisdom. if I get to be too much. Wisdom is pouring out of you, Judy. We love that. Um, I was thinking as, as uh, you guys were talking about the idea that um, in, in knitting, knitting together and identifying resources for people who care about what it is, care about creating the generative commons and specifically in or the regenerative commons, um, uh, specifically in the area of, of knowledge sharing, and um, that that there, when you think about things like these are not the same, but ethics.net, which I don't, you know, or ethical.net, I think it's called, where you like go to find people who. Um, do whatever it is you want done um, and adhere to some good practices. It's so loose and vague that, you mm. know, I, I don't 
think it's that meaningful. And at the more, at the tighter extreme, uh, consumer union, consumers union and consumer reports um, that like being, being a trustworthy um, source of, of guidance for, you know, here's some, but here's some people who are do, who were working in this area and beyond that, having the ability to augment good practices by not simply recognizing them, but, but inviting them or giving grants or, you know, whatever the, the other things that OGM manages to do. Right. Um, but, but at, at, at very least building the, the clout, building the reputation for being someone who helps direct you in your entry into the, the digital commons mm -hmm. or the commons period. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. I think it's important to have an easily acceptable um, behavior listing or, or attitude listing, some, whatever we're going to call the conduct framing, framing. Just because I think if you don't do that, things wander. Mm -hmm. and, and if you do it, then you have that to come back to, to discuss what's, be, be, what's happening that's challenging or what's happening that's wonderful. And it's always subject to update or revision. But I just think that we have an implicit, at this point, the, the behavior patterns of this group are implicit. And the group will probably individually um, have a conversation somehow with an individual who's behaving in a way that seems inconsistent with the unarticulated shared goals and values. <laughs> um, also relevant to this conversation, um, Pete Kaminsky, <coughs> excuse me, has an open question. Uh, he created a fact file, which is in the OGM wiki uh, with open questions we have not answered yet uh, about, hey, what does it mean to be a sovereign in, in, you know, in, in this cloud, in this flotilla? Um, and what does it mean when I'm engaged with OGM as a sovereign? Like what, are the, what responsibilities do I have? What benefits, wh whatever. We, that, that we need to sort of answer those questions. And then Phil Kennedy is kind of the first OGM staff in a sense, he's volunteering. Um, but he, uh, on Pete's urging, he drew up an agreement, which, which feels more formal than I think it needs to sound. It sounds like a legal document. It sounds like legalese rather than than a, a simpler agreement. But it's also like, what what's the agreement when you're sort of helping? And and it feels like there's a series there's a series of maybe sort of escalating uh, degrees of intimacy into what OGM and its neighbors are doing. And and all of these things could easily exist you know, on a web page with links to individual documents that explain each of them. And all of them could be in a clonable uh, repository. But part of the goal here is to have a series of documents and insights that anybody could go clone, you know, fork and pull um, uh, and to make them available. So, so if anybody wanted to just like carbon copy what we're up to, like done. And if, if they made improvements to it that we like, we would then pull them. That's, that's hopefully how this works. Uh, again, a process we're not using that much because we're not, nobody knows that we're doing stuff on GitHub. We haven't gone to other communities and said, hey, fork our, you know, fork our, our, our assets here and, and improve them with us, uh, things like that. So, so I think that, I think we need, a, we need some links on the, on the website that say, hey, here's a code of conduct. And one of the challenges to put in front of everybody is, uh, could you recommend other, or, other orgs codes of conduct that we can basically point to? Because there's, I've seen a few really good ones, and I don't see any reason for us to go invent a brand new one. Uh, so let's find a high functioning code of conduct and include it by reference and say, yes, we, we love what they said. Uh, and then let's figure out what the agreement is that we're talking about here. Um, but, there's, but there's a back to the guild, and I'm just gonna use the language of guild for a second. It feels like we need to stand up a guild inside of OGM, particularly that cares about curating these different bodies of work, integrating them and making them available. 
and I don't know what it's called. It's uh, Pete has context weavers, uh, which sounds like a piece of that task. Maybe that's the that's a task for that guild. I don't know, and I don't know how he was thinking of context weavers. Um, I've I've been trying to convince Pete for more than two decades to start a practice called Mavenology, because for me, it, from the tipping point where there's mavens, salespeople, and connectors, uh, I for me like in where the word maven appears in the dictionary, there should be a little dot portrait of Pete in the margin, because he is the maveniest human I've ever met. And, and, and I was like, Pete, just buy mavenology.com and go like teach people to do what you do. And he's, he's had other, other more interesting things to do. Uh, with his I think <clears throat> Pete is, is a wonderful aid and assistant, but I don't know that he likes to sit there and teach. <clears throat> What's weird is he loves to sit there and teach one-on-one -on -one when it's just part of tutoring or whatever. I don't think he's interested in making that like the main line of what he does because he's, he's a good teacher. He's a, a good yeah, coach. Yeah, he's a great teacher. Yeah. But I don't think he wants to become an instructor, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. He's um, more like a sage in the oriental arts practice behavior mode of you, you but work if, with a wise person and you become wiser. But if we could sit in Uchideshi with him, which is like the lead student in the dojo, um, if we could sit somebody next to him to absorb this and turn it into some practice and something else, that would be really, really cool um, and worthwhile for everybody, I think. Um, so, so, so I think we're, we're weaving a, a broader context for the generative con, uh, commons agreement. Um, a small side note, uh, Michael, you, you talked about regenerative commons also. And when thinking about the generative commons name, I intentionally set aside regenerative, even though it's like, like that wave is growing, um, kind of because generative was simpler and seemed to me to invoke regenerative, but be somehow, I don't know, more innocent, more inclusive, more something. I don't know why, um, but, but I went toward generative just because it's a really simple word and you don't have to explain regeneration. And, and I'm a big fan of regenerative economy, regenerative agriculture, regenerative everything. I think it's, very, uh, it's a really important move. Uh, a set of movements, but that was kind of why. Um, so what's next to, to channel Jed Bartlett? Um, if anybody remembers West Wing. <laughs> and what, one of my guilty pleasures is watching old West Wing clips on YouTube because there's like four bazillion of them recorded by random people uh, my, my other guilty pleasure is watching Lionel Messi like work magic uh, on the football field. Um, have you, uh, just to interject, the, have, are you familiar with the West Wing, I forget what it's called, but the West Wing podcast where they just talk endlessly about West Wing? I, I I've not seen other it. subjects. Yeah, I've not, see, I've not seen it. Uh, it it's, it's worth checking out for a West Wing junkie. Yeah. Awesome. I'll send it away. Thank you. Um, cool. So well, go ahead. One thing we could do next is what we started to talk about at the beginning of this call is start inviting other people to take part in these conversations. People from inside OGM who we think they are really important for this conversation, but also people outside OGM who have different perspectives on uh, what's generative, what's a commons, what's an online commons and things like that. And, and try to enrich our own uh, understanding of, uh, of what it is we want to do. I like that a lot. Um, Hank, I, I'm assuming you weren't able to find a draft of a letter that we started. No, anywhere. I, it, it must have been for another conversation of ours, but no, I couldn't find it either in Mattermost or in my own notes. So sounds um, sounds yeah. fine. And I don't remember starting one and I don't yeah. see one in my tabs. So do we need to have a unified draft for this or shall we each just send a, an email to people? Because because it could be that if we word this properly, that that, that wording would be important. And then I would happily start a Google Doc right now and we can kind of co-edit <clears throat> the body of a letter. Do we need that? I, I would tend to think it's, it's useful in the beginning so Sounds that good. when we're inviting people into a conversation, we're all using the same language at least yeah. to start with and then it can go in any direction. Sounds great. Um, sounds great. And uh, <laughs> uh, 
one uh, total side note. Uh, there's a guy named John Demartini who talks about your values, human values. He's a personal growth author. This is one of the many distractions from the last bit. <clears throat> and um, and uh, he has 13 questions that determine your core values. That's part of like what he's invented over time. And they're 13 really good questions. So I created a Google doc with the 13 questions, which my browser has now decided not to cooperate with, but I wanted to share those with you before I create the new document. Uh, do, 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 hold on a second. There we go. And if I put it here, please tell me I did. Yes, good. Ba, ba, da, ba. Uh, and let's see if, I don't know if the privileges on this work, but let me just put it in our chat. Try that. And then let me go ahead and start a Google doc for this invite that we're talking about. Cause I just, I just went to create a new document from an existing document and I ran into Demartini's questions. And here we go. Let's make this shareable. Oops, got to give it a name first. All right, my computer is not doing too many things at the same time. My apologies. Um, so I'll do that, and I'll put uh, I'll put a link in the in the chat in a second. What else should we address, and should we wrap at the top of the hour? Closing in on it. That seems fine. I'm finding 60 minutes appealing lately, Jerry, because my calendar is getting so full. Exactly. Me too. Uh, I will change these calls to 60 minutes. Uh, to 60 minutes. Uh, there we is go. there something that, that we could each, I'm wanting to be kind of proactive about doing work, but how to do it most efficiently. And I'm wondering if something we could incorporate into these calls to the extent it's, it fits it, or is relevant. If there's something that we wanna build on today offline to move into next week's call to see how we've progressed, that might be something to include in the wrap. Um, so do you mean sort of a page where we could start outlining some of these different things we've talked about in this call, like a, a page online? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I can do it in a hack MD and throw it in Mattermost or whatever, but I'm just, I guess what I was thinking is that I love the open-ended generative quality of all of the OGM calls. Um, but I have a part of me that's also get stuff done. Yeah. And what is it that I particularly individually can do to help move something? Yep. Um, and wisdom is one part of what I love to bring to things because it's pretty you don't have to plan to be wise. You just show up. And if something tricks in your mind, then you offer a suggestion and it's either liked or not. But, but I think in terms of the building that we're trying to do now, it would be really useful to have individuals take something they're personally interested in and work on it a bit between now and next week and then share it with the group to say, yep. am I headed in the right direction or does somebody else want to add to this or whatever? Totally agree. Um, totally agree. <clears throat> so, um, uh, hey, Stacy, thanks for joining. We're, we're, we're just about to wrap the call. We're, um, oh, it's the last call. Okay. Exactly. And we're, we're this, I, I had set this call up for 90 minutes, but I think we're going to start trimming calls, uh, some calls, not the Thursday call, but, uh, some calls to just being an hour so that we, uh, we have a is, beginning. Is there end. another call, Stacy, is it start, supposed to start now? that I don't know about. <laughs> no, I think I may, I guess I messed up the time. For some reason, I thought this was an 11 o'clock Eastern time call. Oh, sorry, it's not. It's a, it's, it starts an hour earlier. Okay. All right. So all the calls are at 10 o'clock Eastern now? Alas, they're not. Uh, so uh, this so, one is. So on Tuesday, on, uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, there's the build OGM call on Tuesdays and the generative commons call on Wednesday. Those both start at 7 a.m. Pacific. 10 a.m. Eastern. Okay. The Thursday call got shifted to 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern a while got ago, and, and we'll stay there. And, and 
I made a small attempt to move the Tuesday call later an hour last week or the week before, and we ended up keeping it at the at the early time. So okay, but all we right. also ended up trimming it to an hour. Um, so tomorrow, then, I will see you all. <laughs> exactly. Well, we stay for the few wrapping minutes if you want, Stacy. Oh, I will. Good to see you. Thank sure. you. Um, so so I will work with Pete and Phil to start a page uh, on the OGM wiki to contain some of the things we talked about here and then put that on the generative commons mattermost chat. So we've got it together. I'll uh, start adding some sentences in the uh, Google Docs to, uh, to make a simple uh, invitation for people to join. And uh, if someone else can start thinking about uh, which people would we, would we like to address, uh, then we can put them together uh, for next week. That sounds great. And let's all take a, a swing at, at making a short, crisp invite letter. Uh, and let's see if we can bring more humans to this conversation who matter to the conversation. I think like, like Charlotte uh, from Piragachi is, a, is an obvious person to, to invite in. Uh, she may be, and, and all of these people may be too busy for, for yet another call, but um, like uh, Matt Saia and Jordan Sukut indicated, lots and lots and lots of interest in this, this concept. So um, I think having them in uh, back into the conversation would be great. I think Matt's headed out for two weeks of vacation right now. Oh, okay. Starting when I'm not sure, but I just had a note from him saying, crazy busy till now, headed out for two weeks of vacation. So I'm not sure exactly what his calendar is. Gotcha. And he just finished a big uh, event, a big virtual event for a client. So uh, that, vacation, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stacy, I'm going to put uh, this call on YouTube and then put a link to that recording in the Mattermost channel for this group, which is the Generative Commons channel. Thanks. You are, you are very welcome. And that's my, you. that's my, pardon? That's good. Oops, you're breaking up. You're breaking up on us again, Scotty. I'll try again without video. I was just going to say, you, I am. Uh, you are just a Google ad today. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I and I, uh, I I started working with a colleague a couple of days ago who's all in on Zoho. And he's using Zoho for project management and for a whole bunch of different things. And it's sort of free resources. It's another suite. Uh, and it's, it's got a lot of stuff that Google doesn't have. So it's interesting. <laughs> Sigh. All of our resources. Uh, anything else for this call before we wrap? So our goal um, is to have more humans in this call next week. Uh, who are interested in this topic. Let's be mindful about uh, diversity and representation and try to invite uh, people who might not normally. Uh, Vincent, we're, um, we had a goal over the last couple of calls to, um, we're talking about, a, 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 oh, for a, like, a, like a number to hit? Yeah, but that's if you know the goal of uh, life or the goal of the gender of commons, and I'd love to hear that too. But yeah, I was uh, referring to how many people do we want to be here? What is, uh, so like the first call we had, I cross promoted it in a lot of different communities. I think we got, you know, there was probably about 15, 16 people. Um, I'm wondering at what point yeah what is the ideal kind of size that we want to have for this group do we want to keep it something smaller do we want it to be about 20 people do you want it to be a hundred um i think yeah that's that's kind of my question um great question and, <laughs> um for me the way my brain works is like the right size for the interest and nature of the quest at hand and i don't know what that number is for this group um, if we were doing what Judy asked us to do, which is different people volunteering to take different bites of the problem, go solve it and come back in and say, here's what I did, what do you think? Uh, if we were doing that lather, rinse, repeat, I think we, a lot of the people who were initially invited would probably come back in and go, oh, okay, you're making progress. Um, and so I think, a, I think a piece of what will make us attractive to a lot of people is just standing up some pages and making progress on the questions that we're talking about. Because I love our, our conversations are really generative. 
um, and they're not turning into things that we're feeding back into the community and asking, asking other people to pick up and do. And from a functional perspective, like for me, 25 or, or even like, you know, 40 people on a Google screen is, is reasonable. As soon as, as soon as Zoom moves to two screens, I lose some capacity to see what's happening in the room, but that's still manageable. So if this grew to 80 people in the conversation and it was fruitful, I'm totally fine. Um, I, I would love that. And that would mean that we're, we're making some progress on, on, on fleshing this out. So, so I, don't have a, um, I don't have a number in mind, but it would be lovely to double the size of our, you know, to go to, to, go to 12, for example, that'd be great. I do wonder if we're, if we're um, I, I agree with that, um, uh, but also we've, we've sort of um, lived back and forth over the border of OGM and the commons today. Um, and if this meeting is more about the commons, um, are, we, are we inviting people to come help define the commons and, and connect us with other people who are interested in, you know, notions of the commons and um, be, be less denominational in terms of OGM in this meeting. Um, I'm, I'm just throwing that out. Yeah, so, so for example, what you just triggered is um, uh, we're friends with uh, the Ostrom workshop in Bloomington, Indiana at Indiana University uh, on governance models for the commons. We, and Doc Searles, a dear personal friend, is uh, probably gonna go live in Bloomington for a couple of months uh, and kind of be a fellow there because they've taken a liking to some of his frameworks uh, around how to work uh, the customer commons, is, which is his latest venture. Um, so I'm gonna ping Doc and, and uh, you know, see if he can't ping some people at Indiana and bring them in to this conversation because they have a lot of wisdom to share probably. Uh, uh, and I think that there's other groups like that that are completely relevant and might be interested in this conversation. So in some sense, we're trying to host or steward a multi-pronged uh, mission into figuring out what is the simple way to articulate working in, in these commons together. Um, and if we trip across someone else who is doing this already and better, we should just go join their conversation. And adopt their documents. So, so the, this is kind of a general OGM working rule for me. It's like if somebody else has already built it, let's go help them, and use what they've built. And if they've built eighty percent of it and and it's open source, then let's just improve their eighty percent and feed it back to them through fork and pull or whatever means, uh, and and still not you know not go reinvent anything that doesn't need reinvention. But but the, the whole purpose here is to figure out what does it mean to, to work together on commons. So, so I think these calls aren't really as much about OGM as they are about commons. And I think what lit up in Matt's head and Jordan's head and a few other people's heads was like, well, damn, like we have interesting frameworks for dealing with copyright, like Creative Commons, but we don't have kind of a way to say, this is, this is our intention on all these different fronts together. Uh, not just and not just on the legal and intellectual property front, but on the intentions and methods front, process front. So does, does that sort of answer the question? Yeah, I think I think if the goal is to figure out who else is working on this, invite people in, be very open sourced about how we fork and pull. I think what would probably be most beneficial for this group is to take everything that we've done. What are, where have we gotten with a document? Where have we gotten with conversations? Um, and we need to put that out there <laughs> so other people can see it. Right. Then we need to share it and we need to give some time for it to propagate around and then have a, this is where we're meeting where you come back and find us because otherwise we're just working in a silo and the people that come into the call might miss the 30 minute, might miss the meeting where the actual stuff is happening that they're like, oh yeah, I've been working on this. Um, and, and I feel like we probably just need to have a bigger sign, even if that sign is made of like, you know, um, 
fireflies cardboard and <laughs> sharpie markers uh, at least people could see us yeah 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 i agree i agree and the, in the mattermost chat i just i wrote jerry to create a page in ogm wiki with some of these resources i think that's a starting point but that doesn't include yet like what does a generative commons agreement look like and i think we need a draft of, of something like that to, to sort of show and tell and all of these things would be on the ogm wiki which means they're on github which means they're easily um uh you know forked etc um so totally agree cool that makes that makes sense to me it makes me happy anybody else last words for the call um are these recordings uh unlisted or public these or are public uh, these calls i'm posting on youtube and then i'm posting those links into the chat uh the page the resource pages should include a playlist for these calls i should do that Okay, cool. Um, sounds good. Cool. Judy, you were saying something else? No, I just said it was a good call. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, excellent call. See you next week. Okie dokes. Can you on for just a second afterwards? <clears throat> uh, I will leave the room, but I'll, leave, I'll pass you the controls. How about oh, that? Oh, I wanted to chat with you. Can we just set up a time oh. to do that later today or something? Oh, with me? Sorry, I can, I can hang out. I didn't hear, I didn't hear who you were addressing. Yeah, I was just, <clears throat> I had a question for you. Sure, perfect. Um, I will hang out and I'll turn off the recording. Bye-bye. Thank you.